So this morning I'm going to talk about the disappearance of Madeline McCann. Uh, this has been requested quite a bit and I generally stayed away from it, I guess, uh, for two reasons. One, as you know, I, I don't like to do uh, famous cases on this channel too much. I mean, if they are of great interest to me um, from a... Uh, personal you know interest standpoint I'll do them like West Memphis 3 and Jeffrey McDonald and Charles Manson I mean those ones have always interested me since I was a kid uh, so I wanted to do them. Madeline McCann I just never watched I never uh, followed or anything like that I was aware of it of course because of the media coverage but it was just not one that's intrigued me. And another reason, probably because it happened overseas. Um, and I don't know, maybe, uh, I mean, that's not really an excuse of any sort. It's just, uh, it just, when something happens and it's not in the United States of America, I don't particularly pay much attention to it. However, when you got a three year old missing kid, you know, you pay a little bit of attention. So, I looked at this, researched it uh, for a couple days, and it's fairly obvious to me, I think, what happened. This isn't a mystery like West Memphis 3, I don't think, at least in my mind, my opinion. A couple things that bother me about it, and we'll get into that. So, Madeline McCann was a three-year-old girl. She was on vacation in Portugal um, with her mom, dad, and twin brother sisters who were, I believe, younger than Madeline. Now, when you start looking at a missing persons case like this, you know, victimology is always paramount. But when you have a child, especially, you know, under the age of, let's say, 10, um, there isn't a lot of victimology. Therefore, you have to pivot to the parents and determine whether you're looking at victimology or suspectology. You know, whether you're doing a background investigation on the parents to find out whether they're responsible um, or are they victims as well. And I think we can figure that out here. One of the things that stands out to me, and I might as well get to it right off the bat, um, is the parenting of Madeline McCann, at least, and, and the other two children as well. The parents whose names are Jerry and Kate seem well-educated. I believe they are both doctors. Um, and they're on vacation in this resort. But it's not their hometown. It's not even their home country. When you travel overseas, for me, when I travel anywhere, but specifically overseas, you have to be very careful. To be honest with you, I don't like it. I don't like traveling, especially with children, overseas and I 
again, pride myself with seeing things through everybody's eyes. And I don't like to rain down my supremacy of parenting skills or whatever it is, my moral compass. I don't like to do that because I don't feel that my moral compass, my ideologies are better than anybody else's. They're just mine. And I have them for my own particular reasons. And we'll get into why I'm discussing that here in a little bit. But they're on vacation. It seems that the, the day that Madeline disappeared, which was May 3rd, 2007, it, now again, I don't have the Portu, Portuguese police reports, but it seems that the parents didn't spend a lot of time with the kids leading up to this kidnapping. The father was playing tennis. Uh, they dropped the kids off at a kid resort or something and went and did their own thing. Um, does that bother me? Maybe. Maybe it struck a little bit of chord with me when you're trying to figure out and deduce who could have done something. But that night, I guess it was around 8.30 p.m. on May 3rd, 2007, Jerry and Kate put their kids to bed in this ocean club resort and by different accounts either 100 yards away or 50 yards away regardless it was away from the room they left their children to go have dinner with a group of other adults they left the door unlocked now that bothers me I have to admit Maybe there was a reason for that that I don't know about. Maybe they didn't have a key to the room. Whatever it was. The safety of your child, let alone other children, has got to be paramount in life. Again, I don't like to preach. It's just my philosophy. I will always put my kids' needs before me. That's the way I was brought up. So maybe that is why that's instilled in me. I'm not saying that's right. It's just my belief. If my child is sitting there and I have two hot dogs, they finish theirs, and they want my hot dog even though I want that extra hot dog, I will give it to them. That's just me. If we are on an airplane flight, and my child wants to sit next to the window. And I've never sat next to the window. And I want to sit next to that window. I will move. And give that window seat to my child. And probably any child. Not just mine. The reason I say that is because it's paramount. That our children's safety. Takes precedence over, over our greed and our happiness. That's my opinion. Now, apparently, I might be in the lower percentile of thinking like that. Because at this particular function, I believe I read there was at least seven adults, seven families, who were also left their kids alone in a hotel room while they ate dinner. And I'm sure, well, I, I hate to make the assumption, I'm going to guess there was alcohol involved. Now, I'm not the alcohol police, okay? I'm just saying it's something I wouldn't do. Do what you want. But I know, number one, alcohol impedes thought process. When you need to react quick, in a hurry, alcohol will pee. I got nothing against alcohol. I love drinking beer every now and again. And when I do it, I do it well. I'll never do it around my child. 
especially a younger child. Because if something happened, I need to react and I need to be clear headed. That's me. So when I'm looking at this case and I'm throwing in my biases, I have red flags. So let's get to the timeline. 8.30, they go to this restaurant. Some accounts that I read in a newspaper said 50 yards away. Dateline NBC, I think, said 100 yards away or vice versa. Too far away for me to leave a door unlocked in a foreign country where I don't know people to go drink alcohol. I'll tell you that. Yet, that's what they did. Now, apparently, Madeline McCann had said something to her mother that day, why weren't you in the hotel room when I woke up and was crying last night? So apparently, they had did this the night before. And apparently, didn't learn their lesson. Because let me tell you something. If my child would have said, hey, why weren't you there in the morning or at night when I woke up crying to tuck me in and comfort me? I would have felt that big. And I would have never done it again. That's me. But apparently it didn't deter Jerry and Kate. As they went out again to eat that night. And they had set up a system now. For them to check on the children. Apparently they didn't have that system in place the night before. Are you following? So. This tells me a little bit about the parents. They care enough about their children to take in consideration Madeline's feelings about their parents not being there when she woke up in the night previous. That they're at least going to go check on her. Okay. Not only, and this bothers me too, I, there's a whole lot of shit about this case that bothers me. Not only, it wasn't just Madeline's parents that went and checked every 15 minutes, and I guarantee they didn't stay on that timeline if they were drinking. Even if they weren't drinking, you get engrossed in conversation, 15 minutes might lead to 25 minutes. But every 15 minutes, they're to go check on Madeline and the other two children, but they allowed other parents that were there having dinner with them to go and check as well. I don't like that. Never would do that. I would never have another parent go check on my child. That's me. A lot of it may have to do with maybe, and I didn't want to bring this up, and I'll just bring it up briefly, the loss that I had of a child. Okay? So because of that bias, um, I guess I am probably more paranoid of something happening. Now, 10 o'clock p.m., Kate, the mom, goes and checks. Now, Dad had checked earlier, I believe around 9, maybe it was 9.30. He noticed the door was open a little bit more than usual, but all three kids were there. Maybe the wind just blew that door open. I don't know. 10 o'clock, they check, and guess what? Madeline's gone. Window's open. Window was closed before. Doesn't matter because the door was unlocked. Like an idiot, the door was unlocked. I don't understand that. Now, you can you can judge, which I am, you know, very harshly about them being reckless parents. Yet there's other people that are watching this right now that see no issue with that. And that's fine. That's the way they are. I know parents that have no problem leaving their kids alone. Young kids. And going, doing whatever. Even just going outside, doing housework, leaving kids. I would never do that. That's me. But that's the beauty about this. Is this is my channel. I can give my opinion of what I would and wouldn't do. However, I got to take and remove that bias and focus on facts of the case. 
just because I feel a moral obligation to say I feel they were reckless parents and this could have been avoided had they been responsible parents it does not indicate their guilt in their daughter's disappearance now we've gone through this before on other suspects other cases um, just because somebody's a bad person just because Damien Eccles tortured animals, kicked dogs, worshipped Satan even, maybe. Doesn't mean he's a murderer. It doesn't. Well, maybe he is, but you can't conclude that just based off of that. The same way I am doing with Madeline McCann's parents. Just because I feel they were irresponsible and reckless and leaving their child, children unattended with the door unlocked in a foreign country does not make them guilty of murder or being responsible for their daughter's disappearance. And in fact, I don't believe they are. Now, there was indications that they brought in a dog and they... The dog indicated and found blood inside that apartment that they were staying in, also in their rental car. But DNA later showed that it wasn't Madeline's blood, at least in the apartment and in the rental car, it was inconclusive. Um, I, I wouldn't even need the results of the rental car. The actions of the parents, the timeline of the parents, to me, indicate that they're not involved. When I watched interviews of the parents, everything I saw was very authentic. There was definitely a layer of guilt all over them. But the guilt wasn't that they were responsible for this girl's disappearance, although they were responsible because they were reckless in leaving her unattended. They did not kill her. They did not abduct her. If they took a polygraph test, I would be surprised if they passed. Because their guilt for leaving her is overriding everything else. And I see that. And that is something I believe good parents have. Now what are you saying, Kenny? You just went through a whole... 15 minute speech about how they're bad parents. No, I never said that. I never said that. I said they made a very poor choice that night and obviously the previous night, which means they probably have done that before. A poor choice doesn't mean they're bad parents. Okay? Let's get that straight. So what so what happened? What occurred? Well, it's fairly obvious to me that Madeline McCann was abducted. Now, I will be the first to admit, although that I have been reached out for, uh, over, from law enforcement and victims' families overseas to help on cases, I don't think that I've done one overseas. If I think that I have later on, I'll let you know. But right off the top of my head, I can't think that I've done one. Because the laws, the criminal procedure, customs. It's hard even to do a criminal profile or a crime scene assessment. A crime scene assessment's a little bit easier. When you don't even know the customs, the regulations, the religions, all that is so important in determining a criminal profile of the person who, I mean, yeah, it, it'd be easy to say, well, somebody that has a, a proclivity for sexual assault for young women. Well, shit. You know, 
ten year old kid can tell you that. It's everything else that you have to take into consideration about the case. The religion of people around the area, the customs, what is norm, uh, law, all of that plays a factor in criminal profiling. Therefore, I kind of shied away from it because I, I'm ignorant to most other countries' laws and customs. So just in, like in this case, I can't, I can't do a criminal profile um, with any confidence. But you can still deduce, you can still start off with possibilities and deduce the probabilities of what happened based off of the parents everything that I've seen from them, them checking on the child, the timeline, um, you can rule them out. Now, I had read somewhere that they gave her sleeping tablets and stuff. Listen, this ain't Casey Anthony, okay? This ain't Casey Anthony, who, by the way, murdered her daughter, whether it was an accidental death by giving him too much Xanax or whatever it was, not drowning in a pool, um, and discarding her body uh, like a piece of trash, this ain't the case. I believe Madeline McCain was abducted. Now, the question I have is whether it was a burglary as the primary motive, and then the opportunity arose to take the child. Eh, that happens, yes. It's possible. Now, is it probable? It is only probable if the offender has a proclivity to children or can make a profit from that child. Sex trafficking, human trafficking, is a very big problem. It's a problem I don't know enough about. I have to educate myself more on this, I dabbled in it. I even went to a um, Hollywood premiere movie when I was out in LA for the History Channel, that show, Hunt for the Zodiac Killer, which uh, I co starred in. There was a fantastic actress named Christine Rutten from Sons of Anarchy that stopped by our set and she wanted to meet me. I, I knew who she was, so I wanted to meet her. Well, guess what? After we went out to dinner, uh, later that week, she took me to a my first ever and only Hollywood red carpet premiere of a sh TV documentary movie called, it was about human trafficking. I learned a lot. And I realized it's a bigger problem than what I realized. I think it happens a lot more overseas than it does here in the United States. So that's something that has to be looked at. Now, if it was just here in the United States and it's a burglar that goes in and burgles the house, robs the house, I have a hard time thinking he's going to take a body. By body, I mean a child alive. Now, you do that one, if, like I said, you have a proclivity to that. Two, you think you can make money off of that. But the most obvious way to make money off of that is not through sex trafficking. If you go and you do that and you come who are you going to give it to? You'd have to know somebody in the sex trafficking business. Or the most logical reason that you do it is for ransom. Hey, okay, I'm... I need money. I'm burglar in this house. I'll take this child um, and I'll write a ransom note. You don't see that here. And another reason you don't see that there is because if that was the case, why would they take the three-year-old child? Why not the younger child? You know? So to me, that deduces the possibility of that to a probability that the Girl was taken by somebody that had a proclivity to young girls. Or 
knew somebody in the human trafficking trade that could get rid of her. That's the only two possibilities for me. Um, now, of course, you have to consider that the child wander off. Sure, when you're initially there, but I think you rule that out rather quickly. Um, when she's not found within that area, and it's not a mountainous area or anything like that. Now, I certainly could see Madeline getting up again, which she had done the previous night, apparently, saying, Mom and Dad still aren't here. I'm going to go find them. She would have ran into somebody. There would have been witnesses. Now, there was somebody that said, somebody within the dinner group of the parents who said when she went to check on her kids, she saw a gentleman carrying a child away. He was a suspect, naturally. But it come to determine it was just a uh, guy on vacation carrying his own child who had fallen asleep. Um, I'll have to take their word on that. Because sitting here thinking about it, I know if my child falls asleep, I'm not carrying her like this. I guess I have. But it's usually over, you know, like this. To me, this is somebody carrying somebody away. Um, it's almost like you would carry a dead, a dead child. I think of John Bonet and how John Ramsey carried her up the steps like this. Now, granted, she was already in rigor mortis, makes it a lot harder. But um, this means something. This doesn't. <laughs> If you haven't seen my John Bonet video, go check that out. And you know, hey, everyone has their own opinions on that, but um, I have mine as as well. <sighs> so apparently, there is a suspect from Germany that they did uh, develop, who lived a mile away from that ocean club, who was a I believe a convicted child molester and also was involved in some thefts and he apparently was like to burglarize resorts hence where they were staying you leave an unlocked door that, I, that part just I can't get over that please tell me there was a reason why you leave the door unlocked please tell me that I don't I I don't understand that. If they give you a key, the most precious thing you have in the world, times three, is in that room. Why don't you lock it? That bothers me. I, I, I can't forgive the parents for that. I can't. I'm not jumping on the parents because I know that they didn't do this to their daughter. But they could have prevented it. And it was a bad choice. It was a horrible choice. They're lucky they didn't lose all three of their kids. I don't understand how you don't lock the door. Anyway. Listen, they got enough guilt on their shoulders. They don't need me placing any more blame on them than what they have. I... I I was going to say, I don't know how they, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I won't go there. Um, yeah, but I've seen the headlines where they said the parents gave them sleeping tablets and stuff. Like I said, this is not Casey Anthony. They didn't give sleeping tablets to them. Um, they just left the door unlocked and somebody took advantage of it. Now, did that person who took advantage of it, could it have been they just were there for the first time that night and, and it's checking doors, checking windows? Yes. It's very big. It could be a, a, a crime of opportunity. He, he's there checking windows, checking doors, and says this one's unlocked, goes in and sees Madeline there. I don't buy that. The reason I don't buy that is because I, I think it is more of I guess I could buy it if they had done it before. If you're there to burglarize a, a resort, 
you got to, there's a lot of witnesses, okay? A lot of potential of being seen. Not only are you committing a felony for the burglary, but man, are you up in your risk factor by snatching a child? To me, that is something that has to be planned out a little bit in advance. Meaning, I'm there the night before, two nights before, and I'm seeing these parents leave their kids and go eat. That's when I'm going to strike. And that's when I'm going to take your child. Or, that's when I'm going to rob your, your bungalow, your apartment. That makes sense to me. It could be that it's just opportunity. He just happened upon there that night. Um, but that's possible. But I think it's more probable that he had cased that out uh, maybe a night or two previous to that. The parents always have to be a suspect in cases like this. And they were. And I also researched that the Portugal police wanted Kate to sign a confession that she had accidentally killed her, her child. And she obviously didn't, wouldn't do that, thank goodness, if it's not true. And in this case, I don't think it is true. I believe that Madeline McCann was kidnapped for the purpose of one of two reasons. Or both. Sexual assault and or human trafficking and or both. Um, I can't say which for sure, but I can narrow it down to those two. You can't say it's for financial gain as a kidnapping or a ransom note would be found unless you're selling her into human trafficking. Uh, let me go over my notes. Again, you don't have to make this as difficult and go down all these rabbit holes when it's fairly simple that she was abducted and the parents had nothing to do with it. Now, you can spend hours going down different rabbit holes, but it's not necessary. All you do is create more stress on yourself. I've learned not to do that. Now, if I see something that warrants me going down that rabbit hole, I will explore it, no doubt. Um, but to me, this is, case is fairly simple. Much like John Benet Ramsey, I I would say that this case is a little bit easier than John Benet. John Benet Ramsey case, there's still, in my in my opinion, there's a possibility. That there was an intruder. I will I will say that. Not um, it's not probable. Uh, to me, someone in that house committed that crime. I'm not saying it was Burke. I'm not saying it was Patsy. I'm not saying it was John. But one of those three, or a combination of those three, I feel, based upon the evidence. But. There's still a possibility, you know, that it could be an outsider. In this case, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing the, the possibility that the parents are involved. Not at all. To me, 100% abducted. All right, let me go over my notes here. Portugal. Parents were doctors on vacation. Younger brother and sister, they were at the resort. Um, timeline, we went through the witness seeing the man carrying a child earlier. Parents seem authentic, but they were reckless. I have here the parents should be charged. Not with murder, but endangering the welfare of a child times three. If I was a police officer and that happened in my jurisdiction when I was on the job, um, of course, you always got to consult with your prosecutor, but I would have brought to the prosecution they should be charged on three counts of endangering the welfare of a child. Now, once you do that, 
you set off a whole firestorm of activity that they're guilty for their, per, their Madeline's murder. Because that's the headlines. But I'd be the first in front of the camera to say, no, they didn't do this. But they were irresponsible. They were reckless. And they're getting charged with an, an M1, a misdemeanor of the first degree for endangering the welfare of the children by leaving them in this hotel room. I don't care if you were 10 yards away. You're 100 yards away. You can't hear them scream from there with the door unlocked. I'm charging you. And I would, plain and simple. The evidence about the rental car, the signed confession. I went over all my notes. So, to recap, very irresponsible in my opinion to leave the kids unattended. I would have charged them had it happened here in the United States. But um, doesn't mean they're responsible. And I don't believe they are responsible for the little girl's disappearance. Yes, they are responsible because they left them there. But they didn't do it. Is she still alive? Now, the prosecution, prosecution from Germany, who says they solved this case, um, stated the individual who's a person of interest had some video or something, something that they stated proved to them that Madeline McCann wasn't alive. And I don't know what that was. If there was something on those, on film, that this suspect did to Madeline and it proved that she was dead, I think he would be charged, right? I mean, there is no body, and I know they did a search warrant at this suspect's house, but wouldn't he have been charged if there was something on film? You know, maybe it was simple as they found pictures of Madeline that he took. But even then, I think maybe that would be enough to charge him. That at least it gives you probable cause to know his cell phone pinged in the area of that resort, his past as a child molester, and pictures of the child taken. I would say that would be enough. But I don't know what they... I don't know what else they would have on him to say that they know for sure that she's dead. I, I, From what I see, I can't conclude that. Not at all. So, I don't know whether she's alive or dead. But I do know that she was abducted. She didn't wander away and the parents are not responsible um, for that disappearance. I guess that's it for Madeline McCann. Um, hopefully there'll be some resolution to this case. Hopefully the parents... Listen, I know they are not only grift-stricken since 2007. I know they blame themselves. I know they do. I know from personal experience they do. That'll never go away. Never go away. Um... You could have all the therapy in the world. You could have all the friends in the world. Everybody in the world telling you it's not your fault. But you always believe that it is. And in this case, I don't think I'd be the one telling them it's not your fault. It's tough. You want to be sympathetic. Absolutely. Victims and victims' families are number one. Always. On the forefront of why I do this. It's one of the reasons I believe I am, you know, I, one of the most sought-after cold case investigators in the world. Okay? is because I have empathy, I have passion for these cases and these victims and especially the victims' families. And I do for Jerry and Kate McCann. I feel for them. 
yet I feel it was because of their reckless decision that this happened. Does it make it any less painful for me No. I don't want to pile on these victims' families. Like I said, they're going through enough. But I wouldn't be me. I wouldn't be, I would not be Kenny Maines, the person who tells it like it is, no filter, but yet has empathy for the victims' families. If I didn't address their decision to leave those kids alone that night. So I addressed it, I move on. I still have empathy for these parents. And I'm going to leave it at that. That's my assessment. Madeline McCann, May 3rd, 2007. I hope it's my wish that the Madeline McCann case will be unsolved no more. With that, Maine's out. Oh,